Woman strikes up conversation with cute seatmate on airplane. Two years later, they get engaged. So her name is Megan Meza, and this is her story. It says, as Megan Meza settled into her window seat on her layover flight from Los Angeles to London in April of 2022, she noticed a cute man entering her row. She observed him placing his bags in the aisle seat and fumbling with some items in his bag. That's when he accidentally dropped his AirPods on the floor. Man, I had a flight a, a couple months ago. I was getting, as I was getting off the plane, I had to bend down in my seat to get something. And one of my ear, I think I went like this and my, my, one of my earbuds like fell out of my ear and fell on the floor and I never found it. Like the, it, it can be very difficult to find those things because they get trapped in crevices or they roll down so far that you don't know where it went to. It's hiding in a corner somewhere and you can't see it, you know? So I, I get the frustration of that. Seeing him scramble to find them, Meza decided to take a chance and strike up a conversation. I was like, hey, I've dropped my AirPods before. You should wait. When the plane takes off, everything will roll behind us, the Los Angeles native tells people exclusively of her conversation. And he was like, oh, thank you, thank you, she adds, recalling his reply and hearing his British accent for the first time. So let's break this part of the story down so far, right? So what do we not see here? What we do not see is that this guy didn't have to approach her. He didn't have to spit any kind of game at her. And we notice on her side of things, she peeped him first, liked what she saw, and then found an excuse to strike up a conversation with him. Because in her head, how is he going to know that I'm interested if I don't try to talk to him in some fashion? And notice, she didn't give a pickup line. What she said was she, there was an incident happening, and she used that as her gateway to start a conversation. Hey, guy, I've dropped my AirPods before. Now, you in the wild might not even think that that is a girl's attempt at trying to hit on you. But as I try to stress to you guys, women that you don't know, that just you ran, they randomly see you in public and come up to you, more often they're not, more often than not, they're doing that because there's a spark of interest there and they're curious to have an interaction with you. But what they're going to do is do some low level talk like this in hopes that you pick up what they're putting down and that you'll help them to continue the conversation. They're not going to be as forthcoming as most guys are because they're already thinking, well, he might have somebody or if he doesn't want to talk to me, I don't want to seem like too much of a burden. So I'm going to just put something out there and hope that he grabs onto it. And in this case, that's what this guy did. At the time, this guy did probably not know that she was talking to him in an attempt to pick, pick him up, but that's why you have me here to, to, to tell you guys that when somebody is, when a woman out there is just randomly starting a conversation with you, rarely is it just to try to start friendly conversation. Like she doesn't know this guy. And so if, if it was a stranger she didn't find attractive, for example, even if he dropped his AirPods, she would not be trying to start a conversation because he would have not passed her attractiveness test, you know, but this guy did. So when you're in public and a random woman, whether you're at a party, get together, networking event, whatever, just comes up to you and starts having a conversation, take the, take the thought that more likely than not, this may be her way of trying to open you for a conversation just to see what you're about. This doesn't necessarily mean right away that she's highly interested, but it does mean that she's curious enough to see what you're about, what you sound like, what you know, what your um, interaction is going to be like, so that way that can go forth, all right? So we'll continue on. So then after that, so these are the two right here. So that's him, and that's her in the, in the aviator glasses, I guess. <laughs> So she says, so it says Meza and the man whom she later learned was named Freddie chatted throughout the boarding process. Eventually, another passenger sat between them, but they didn't let that stop them from conversing. Once the plane took off, the two continued talking about their families, friendships, and lives as best they could over the girl sitting in between them. Meza even informed her mom, who was sitting further up on the plane with her dad, about the fateful encounter. So now we have a girl who's been smitten by this guy with the British accent. They're talking across a lady in the seat between them, and it just keeps going and going. And notice what she did not say. The article does not say, and while they were talking, he was trying to, like, pick up on her and trying to, like, you know, see if they could get to London or whatever and hook up with each other. It's just for right now, 
They're having a conversation to see where this is building to so they can learn about each other. It's very low pressure situation, even though they're in a plane, which has high pressure, but it's a low pressure situation and a low pressure conversation that she is had, took the lead on initially, right? So the But again, all he's doing is just talking about family and about his life. And she's already gone up to the front of the plane to tell her parents, hey, I met this guy. I think he's kind of great. We could like, all he had to do was just have a normal ass conversation with her. But in the process of having that conversation, he's revealing stuff about himself on a lower level, but revealing stuff about himself that's making her feel like, oh, I could see how this could gel with me and my lifestyle. Oh, his family sounds so nice. Oh my gosh, this guy sounds so amazing. And all he's doing is just being regular. He's not overextending. He's just having a conversation. So there we go. A few hours later, the lights started to go off. We got our glass of wine and I was like, oh, so nice to meet you and cheers to the next few hours of this flight. Not long after she pulled out her book to read, but she was no more than a page in when she noticed Freddie pass her his phone over the girl who was still asleep in the middle seat. <laughs> Freddie had opened up his notes app and typed out a note that said, have you got a boyfriend? I then responded no with a smiley face and sent it back to him, she says. Now, as I've said to you guys before on this show, I'm not the biggest fan of you coming out and asking a girl, so are you in a relationship? Do you have a boyfriend? That to me typically screams like you're not all that confident about where this interaction is going. But even with that said, you know, because as I said before, if a woman finds you highly attractive and cute, then these kind of missteps won't be taken too seriously. And so, but even with this question, have you got a boyfriend? He's not saying in that moment, hey, I want to be your boyfriend. It's an inquiry for him to see, hey, before I continue this conversation further, I need to make sure you're not taken, taken for already because if you are, I'm not trying to get beat up by another guy. So when she responded back, no, as I said before, when women like you, they help you. If she didn't have any interest in him, she could have said, yes, I do. She could have said, well, no, but I'm not looking right now. But instead, it was a straight up no with a smiley face. And this was this is key because he didn't send this note to her like when they first started having a chatty conversation. He waited until they had a lengthy enough conversation to where he felt pretty confident that she's probably not seeing anybody else. But even with that, her response was key to let him know that unequivocally she's not taken. They didn't have wine together. They didn't talk for a while over this lady. And so these were all good signs that she was trying to give him that indicated, hey guy, like I, I'm available to talk some more and do some other stuff. So then, oh, they got a they got a TikTok video. Let's watch this video they have here. This is when they first met. So I'm gonna, uh, I wanna play that again, but I don't think they're gonna let me cause it's, it's, ah, well, Anyway, the point is, so they send a text to the friends. Oh my God, I think he's so cute and whatever. Let's see if I can play this. Let me see. Okay. They stop you for the next week. They have a text every day. They can make the run and see him again. Surprise me in New York. We'll be a few years long distancing each other whenever we could. I'm not going to leave this in the way because this song is in here. Ugh. Let's do this. And now long distance is finally over. So they got engaged. Throughout the rest of the flight, they ended up passing notes on his phone and even swapped seats with the woman. Yeah, because she was probably annoyed at that point that they were just talking over like, hey, like I'll, I'll sit on the aisle seat. Just please, please, for the love of God, stop talking over me. <laughs> so uh, later when the plane landed, they exchanged contact information thinking they would never see each other again. Okay, so at this point, they land, they swap information, and they're thinking that was a nice ride. Nothing's going to happen. But from that point on, they started texting and FaceTiming every single day. Two weeks after meeting, this is key, guys. Meza decided to book a flight to London for a July visit. So what do we see happening here? We see that she met this guy on a plane. She felt a connection. They exchanged information. They're now texting back and forth quite often. And who's the first person that decides to book a flight to see the other one? The answer is her. She decides, you know what? I like this guy so much. I want to go out there and see if we can have more time together so I can get a better gauge of where my feelings are for him in the hopes that they grow even more to where I want this to be a thing. So again, we have a woman who is highly interested 
And because of that, she's making the first moves. She's paying for the flight. She's going to go see him. And this is what you guys need to get is that, again, when women like you, they help you and they will literally go to the ends of the earth to see to it that they can spend time with you and that you know unequivocally that they want you. A ticket to London from L.A. is not cheap. The fact that she's willing to do that is more than enough of a signal to this guy that, oh, she really likes me. And again, all he's doing is just being himself sending messages when she was, when she reaches out to him and he's being very low key about this. At this point in time, he's not expressing feelings. He's not expressing, I see a future with you. He's not expressing like all these lovey dovey things that guys think they have to express. All he's doing is being his natural self, living his life. And this girl's like, and I want to be part of that in some capacity. She says, we had talked during those FaceTime conversations about doing long distance, but realized it was stupid. If anything, we decided it was great getting to know each other. But when July rolled around and Meza went to London, she had so much fun that she, she's the one, she realized that this relationship wasn't one she could let go of. So in other words, based on their time together, she was able to come to the natural conclusion that she had feelings for this guy and didn't want to let it go. He did not have to try to beg her to come back to London or beg her to be in a long distance relationship or beg her to, oh, please have feelings for me or we, yeah, this is only one visit. We should be together. No, he just lived his life and did him. And because of that, she was able to see herself in his life and say, you know what? I want more of this. So all you guys out there that are thinking, I'm the guy, I got to chase, I got to make all the moves. Your job is to show interest and make yourself available. And if you do those things, and then you're also able to make her feel good things when she spends time with you, then I promise you, she will do most of the work. She will do the reaching out. She'll do the texting, the calling, the planning for the dates. I mean, the, the, the planning to see each other more so than the ones you're asking for. And as we get to later, this guy also did his part. He went and flew to go see her in the States, but she started all that off. She started the conversation with him on the plane. She started, uh, she continued the conversation and exchanged information. She started the texting. She started the vacationing. So she's doing all this stuff, right? And so this is why I tell you guys that part of dating is letting women do actions that help them further, com further com their brain further convince themselves that if they're doing all this work to get you, it must mean that they really, really like you. She and Freddie had a talk and decided they were going to make long distance work. I was like, this is, this is someone I, I, I actually really enjoy spending time with. He checks all the boxes. Okay, so here we go. He checks all the boxes. He's kind. He's funny. He's gracious. He's charming. He takes care of his people. He's got great friends, great family. Notice what she did not say. She did not say, I, okay, I don't know how tall he is to be fair, but he, he didn't say uh, he's got a lot of money or I think that he has a nice enough house to where I could like use him for his stuff. Like it was all qualities as it pertains to the kind of person he is, not about how much money he spends. Again, I don't know, height and stats and stuff like that. And he's got a British accent. So to be fair, you know, women, women love the accent at all. So that could be part of it too. But again, I'm all for guys using whatever they have in their arsenal to be able to attract women. If he's tall and has a British accent, fantastic. But again, in my personal life, I know guys that are friends of mine that are like five, 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 six, that have women in their lives that acted the exact same way that this woman's acting with this guy who's tall, you know? So don't think it's about the height or about the muscles or whatever. That stuff does help. But it's about the fact that for whatever reason, this, this guy checked the boxes. And more importantly, he was making her feel things. He was not forcefully making her feel things. She He was just being himself and just being himself. He was, She was able to have those interactions. And then I also find that, and this is what guys don't take into account, is that when a woman has interest in you, the things you're doing, she will, of her own brain power, make those things be attractive about you. Like, you know, oh, he has a, she, he'll talk about his family. She'll say, oh, he's talking about his family. They sound great. It could just be like, yeah, I see him like twice a year at Christmas and they're pretty cool. And she'll take that to, oh, they're so amazing because she's now going to do everything she can to convince herself as to the reasons why she's choosing you. Because people in general, as, as Corey Wayne likes to say, we make decisions based on emotion and then we use logic and reason to back up those decisions. And men do that too. But women do that especially because they, they are so uh, connected to their emotions that all their emotions are going to flood them with 
them just liking you. And then they're going to go backtrack and think of, oh, and then he made me laugh. That's why I like him. Oh, he's re- he opened my door for me. That's why I like him. Oh, he's charming because he wore a, a, a top hat. That's why I like him. And so you have to leave room for women to come up with their own reasons to like you versus you trying to, you know, negotiate. Well, I'm a great guy because I got a great family and I'm really funny. I swear. Like those are the things that if you try to force them, women are going to be like, why is he telling me all these stats about himself? Is he trying to force me to like him? Like you just being yourself, women will find out what a great guy you are and then come up with reasons of their own as to why they personally think you're so great. So then the article says, Yes, long distance sucks. It's never easy, but I feel we both did a pretty good job of making it work. And it was as easy as it could be given the circumstances. Another picture of them, the happy couple. Finally, after two years of many flights between London and LA, Freddie got down on one knee and proposed to Meza on May 21st at a park they went to on their first date. Following their engagement, she posted a video about their love story on TikTok, which went viral. And then blah, 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 blah. Now reflecting on their first conversation on the plane, Meza shares how she never in a million years imagined this is how the story would turn out. Quote, I saw a man who I thought was very cute and I used that as an opportunity to have this yes moment on a plane where it's like, I'm never gonna see him again. What do I have to lose, she says. And that's the part of the story that is also key because as I've said before, guys, women like the idea of creating their perfect love story moments. You know, and so think about this moment for her, right? L.A. girl on a plane to London and she runs into a bloke who happens to lose his AirPods and starts up a witty conversation about losing the AirPods, which leads to a long plane ride where they're drinking wine and talking about their friends and family and their dreams and hopes. And and she now gets to add to that story. And I stress this because when you're asking women out. You know, and I get it. Some guys are thinking, well, I just want to do a coffee date or I just want to do something that's relatively low key. And hey, I'm I'm all for that. But that does not mean that you also don't think about what kind of moment am I going to be creating for this woman that I'm taking out? Because you could have a first date walk in the park, but are you creating moments during that walk that are going to allow her to go back to her friends and say, oh, we went on this magical walk down this pathway. And then all of a sudden we ran into this guy that was selling flowers and he bought me a thing of flowers. It was just such a like it's important to be able to understand and and recognize when a woman is in a moment where she's trying to create a moment and then help that moment be created. Because then you get to help her build up your guys's love story, which is very, very important for women as it pertains to them telling their friends, their family, and of course, when they walk down the aisle. But suffice to say, guys, I thought that was a great example of, again, when women like you, they help you. And as long as you're showing up, being your authentic self, and you're knowing how to have conversations with women, how to talk to them, what kind of actions to do, how to move in the moment according to what she's doing, then you're going to have great success. If you don't know those things, that part of that is because you don't have a great strategy of dating, which we'll get more into in a little bit. But suffice to say, guys, like, yeah, women, ultimately, if you're doing enough of the things right in those first one or two dates, you will build up a woman's interest enough to where the remaining two and a half months, she will be leading most of it. And all you'll have to do is do your part of asking her on dates and showing her some stellar moments on those dates, whether it's hookups, whether it's, you know, new restaurants or whether it's just like more intimate moments between you guys by way of conversations or games you're playing. Like those are the things you're going to need to do. But the part that she's going to want to do is actions that are going to allow her to further convince herself as to why you're a great guy. Let women have those moments and let her be the one to do most of the work. And some women, by the way, I get it. Some women will hear that and think, you're telling guys not to do any work. I never said that. Guys need to be very calculated in the moves that they're doing and move at the right times so that way they get maximum response and benefits from the women they're trying to date, which again, we'll go over more into the strategy section. But suffice to say, I've just learned in my dating life personally that if if I'm patient and I wait for the right moments to ask for dates, I wait for the right moments to do certain actions or say certain things on dates, then, and again, I'm doing these things authentically because I genuinely like these women, then you will find that you'll give women enough emotional feels to where they're going to want to feel more of that. And they'll know that, you know, they'll they'll be smart enough to know that you as a guy may be trying to hold back a bit because you don't want to rush in, but their emotions, because they have more uh, emotional things going on than we do for for the most part, then their emotions are going to propel them 
to do moves that they would have said before, I would never make this move on a guy. I'd never be the one to call or wait by the phone or do whatever. Trust me, when they're in their feels about you, they will make those moves. But if you don't leave room for them to make those moves, it's going to feel forced from you on their part, and they're more likely to hold back and eventually ghost. So I thought that story did a great illustration of that. Do with that what you will.